Bom, gente, vamos lá. Eu vou mostrar uma pres... Ah, sorry. I will show um, the, uh, um, again, uh, still the Jaguaribi example. We did a little bit of um, climate change analysis with a few scenarios for this. It's been a while. It, this was presented at the 2014 uh, SWAT conference that was here in Brazil. Um, and then after this, I will show some implications in the uh, private in a private company. Okay. So this, well, I showed you the, the project that this was under. This was under that World Bank project. And one of the main goals was to assess the climate variability and what could happen with climate change scenarios, OK? What could be uh, the climate change impacts, especially in planning for the water management in the region, OK? So I'm going to skip a few of the slides here that were already presented uh, for all the model setup that we already seen. So let me just go through this real quick. Yeah, these are just the the calibration and validation too for the region. So what we've done and. The periods for uh, calibration and validation, again, here. So we, uh, for this here, um, we had two scenarios for from the assessment report four from the IPCC, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and um, Martins and Silva uh, tried uh, very, uh, several different model uh, projections uh, and saw what, what uh, climate models were better assessing the climate variability in the region and then se so to select which ones would be probably better to assess climate change. So based on their study, we defined uh, two models to use, two scenarios for climate change. And uh, so we ran the different scenarios here. These are the two scenarios uh, from this different models from 2040 to 2017. That was the, the case here to assess for the, the region here. Well, yeah. So this was what was observed here in blue. Oh, let me do the pointer. So this is what was observed for, this is the, the outlet of the watershed. And then here are the two scenarios of the climate change scenarios, actually. They're just a mean average, actually, for monthly average for the entire period. So they were expected, actually, here to have more precipitation in the uh, first months of the year, but then a little bit less on the, re the rest. And But in terms of what we had in the calibrated scenario, it wasn't actually the variability. The uncertainty in the model was still very big. So it's within the variability that we've seen in the past there, in this case study particularly. So yeah. Do you have any questions on this? I don't have too much to show. I was just going to show that we use that calibrated model to try different scenarios of climate change, and that's something you can do or assess or climate variability even in different regions. So, OK. Any questions on? Yeah, I know. I think everyone is tired. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> ah, see? Uh, yes. <laughs>
No, no, no. <laughs> in, in the right corner, I have in a, in a mute way uh, uh, muted eh, the, the microphone, but also uh, <clears throat> very proudly, I say, well, this is the very important uh, teachers. One of them is also a, an a alumni from this, the same uh, uh, bachelor. <clears throat> okay, uh, one reflection, mm -hmm. it's not uh, especially from one point, uh, related to some discussion that we have in the, this, this week. We have an announcement of the, of the Brazilian uh, Water Agency that uh, is started the, about 16 years uh, water security pro uh, uh, national program. And that means an opportunity in new projects from the public and private partnerships that they are saying about in between 50 to 60 US billion dollars. It's about 180 billion reais announced until 2035. Okay. And that means all the municipalities in Brazil, um, so more than 5,500, so all municipalities really, they need new infrastructure mm -hmm. and a new water assessment. Uh, because close to uh, 40, between 40 to 50% of all municipalities are just in an, a very red zone of water scarcity. Mm -hmm. In terms of quantity and quality, uh, so uh, and that means extremes being reassessed through models because they need to uh, um, reset their infra water infrastructure, so the, the the aging infrastructure and the new infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one reflection is one this is point, uh, uh, in terms of of time. The second is especially the, the, the school, because the school is School of Advanced Studies of Water and Society Under Change. change. Mm -hmm. And we are expecting that our boom in populations going to be the highest until 2050, 2060. So we are still expecting growing infrastructure, and that means we need to re, uh, reassess our hydrological outputs. So, mm -hmm. I think that this is a, a very good reflection that's in these five days we have several application theory and especially the, the, the discussion about why it's important to go inside SWAT Plus. It's not only a wave, but it's, it's still several uh, advantages we have, uh, uh, applications, mm -hmm. uh, in order to run scenarios and inside the scenarios also the changing conditions of some boundary condition that normally we put static in our, mo in our models. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the second reflection, uh, I think this is very important, uh, to uh, promote a new generation of people making hydrological assess assessment, but in terms of scenarios of changing conditions. And we need that. Mm -hmm. We need really that. Uh, for instance, we have the probability of extremes, of, of, of maximums, under change. So our maximums for our bridges, for our culverts, perhaps designed for uh, 50 years return periods. In, in, the, in the next decades, the same level of this church are going to be perhaps about 20, uh, 20 uh, years of return period. Be why? because the extremes are changing, our probability curves are going to the right part, so we need to reassess or make a reflection about that. So that means it's very crucial to us to reassess, to reuse our models, but under changing conditions. And that is the way that SWAT Plus is coming in a very right moment for us. Not only to promote one specific flag of one model, one people, but for several conditions. The first, perhaps the most important, that like we discuss here, is a community-based model. This is open, and people are being trained, also being invited to, to, to be engaged and to have the feedback to the model. Right? And that is very important, and also with SWAT Plus, 
uh, with this version and the future versions, putting more changing conditions, more layers, more facilities, I think this community-based model is going to maintain the, 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 the growing uh, uh, direction. So I think this is a reflection that uh, is all to do, it's, it's a very good connection, this is cool with the SWAT plus cars. So this is, a, of course, an overall reflection, but it's still a very important for starting our work after the cars. Uh, we have two options, maintaining the same uh, uh, thinking that all the things are going to be static. This is, this is a wrong decision. Or we are going to face the changing scenarios using new modeling approach under changing conditions and so on. So for, for me as a hydrologist, this is a very important moment of inflection. It's a turning point and to make an agreement also with the community. Yeah. We are going to, 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 to the past, we are going to the future. And also my, my, my teaching class was about that. Yeah. We can reuse all our knowledge, but under changing conditions. And that is the way that uh, we, are, uh, we are very proud, we are very happy also for your time and also for your feedback for different parts of Brazil, yeah, here and also from, from other countries. Uh, uh, coming to discuss this situation. The hydrology is changing because our society is changing. And we need to adapt to this condition. Today, the, the, the economy is cover, the cover of the, the, the magazine, there is a special issue of climate change. And in the, in the main cover, is only one graph with several, the time between 1850 to nowadays. And you have the colors, of this changing condition, and is going through, through, through blue, this is cooler, to red, this is hotter. And that is scientific evidence. Huh? And when, when you compare the GDP increase in between 1990 to, to nowadays with the, 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 the gas emissions, you have the same curve. So we have also the discussion our, about our society. Our society needs a positive GDP but the GDP is also promoting in our fuel-based economy also the increase of emissions. Yeah? And that is very, very important to decide. And that is the why, why we are need to make adaptation in our thinking to use the best models. So in my opinion, this is a moment of a turning point in the knowledge we are approaching our water and society systems through social hydrology and also through partnership. And the last point is about partnership. Partnership is crucial. Nobody is getting uh, uh, to one point alone. We need to, 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 to make more bridges, more partnerships, internally, nationally, international, regional, also uh, a welcome uh, uh, a knowledge, new, new thinking about that, from natural science, social science, and so on. So I think this is also a, an special moment that you maintain this network that you, you have built up in these five days to maintain this follow-up uh, after the course. So this is very, very important, not especially for the SWOT model or specific model, but to maintain the knowledge alive in the discussion. So for that reason, I, I, I put my emphasis to maintain alive this repository from people maintaining this alive, inputting them their uh, uh, new thinking, new reports, uh, why not thesis, dissertations, reports, papers, or even forums, conference, eh? or even special issues calls. Eh? We are discussing here also to, to, to offer special calls in special journals. Eh? That is the way we are trying to, to make an evolution in our thinking and a best adaptation to this changing uh, situation. So I am very happy of course, they are not the final words, but uh, my reflection, my general reflection of the big picture, we have made, we have attained far beyond the initial goals of this, of this course. And of course, for the, the, the School of Advanced Studies. So, uh, in my words, is only summarized, thank you very much for coming and to stay with us, share with knowledge, 
always alive, always <laughs> new things, uh, and with a, a, a great and kind generosity of your part. Thank you very much. And of course, my words is not uh, is to, to give in an applause to them, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. But I was going to present still something. Oh, no, that's okay, no, no, okay. okay. <laughs> it's not the final one. I, I am leaving okay. us as the, 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 the car is going to crash in the, in the next five minutes. This is, this is my, my way of leaving. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. But, uh, th but that's important because your, 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 uh, your presentations uh, of, of applications, uh -huh. uh, the change moment is, is inside. So that's the. Situation. Of course, no, yeah. And thank you, Mario, for having us and all of you for bearing with us this week, too. So I hope it was hopeful, uh, good for you and you learned. Uh, okay, so let me go back here uh, for another presentation if it goes through. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to present a little bit of um, some SWOT applications in a private com company here in Brazil. Uh, after, well, in the end of my PhD, I went to Climatempo. I'm, I think most of you know the, the company, yeah? Okay. And I worked there for three years before, now I am at the Federal uh, University of Pelotas, but prior to that, I was at Climatempo. And there, they already used SWOT for several applications. And I'm going to show a little bit of what, why they use it and why uh, it, like some real applications that are being used now in, in Brazil, actually. And then I'm going to show a little bit of a project, an R&D project that we've done uh, in Climatempo too, okay? So, I don't need to tell about what is the company, but just uh, to show a little bit um, about what is the group. So it's major, uh, the company you know probably about all the meteorological uh, forecasting, but and the media, uh, uh, so it's in TV, radios, the app, but it's also um, a consulting company, okay? So they deal a lot with energy mostly, civil construction, construction, offshore and retails, sales and agriculture as well. So there is all the different why meteorology impacts all the sectors. So they try to assess that and provide uh, results and better uh, for the people. So here are a few of the, the areas that they touch in terms of uh, TV, radio, insurance, and all the other ones. Here are some clients, for example, here. So energy clients a lot, and but many, many others. For example, retail here. So, so uh, there uh, they built a um, research and development lab, and that's where I was working, OK? There, there is, um, it's focused on environmental sciences. So there's people from meteorology, physics, uh, renewable energies, oceanography, hydrology, uh, computer science, GIS, so remote sensing, and information technology, of course. So there, it was a research and development and modeling uh, area of the company we ran there. We, they run now uh, meteorological ma models, oce uh, oceanographical models, hydrological models, and then artificial intelligence and statistical models as well. So different kinds of models are ran there uh, for consulting and for research and development projects. Okay. So one of the things that are done and one of the uses of SWOT is uh, stream flow forecasting for the next uh, weeks and the next months for the electrical system in Brazil, for the energy system. So we have, this is uh, the grid, the, our Brazilian electrical systems, and there is all the subsystems 
and to determine, for example, the price of energy, how much it will be sold on what time is best to buy, you can do that assessing how will be the inflow, what will be the inflow to the reservoirs, okay? So assessing the stream flow predictions, okay? So we did this, um, we coupled a meteorological model and with a, a more climatic model to, with uh, SWOT and also with um, neural networks, okay? So we had two uh, different hydrological uh, estimations. So for all the different reservoirs in Brazil, so all of the reservoirs, so. Here is, uh, so it is for 15 days. We cover with the weather forecasting model, which we see usually. And then from then on with the climatic, climatic model. And then assessing inflow in all the different reservoirs of Brazil. And then we get all the, that inflow and estimate what will be the energy production. And then they can assess how much, where will go the price. So if you don't have enough uh, rainfall and you don't have enough stream flow or volume of water in your reservoirs, you won't be able to produce as much energy. So the cost of the energy will go up. So it's a good time to sell. So you have to buy another one, not a good time to buy. So that's uh, some kind of assessments, okay? So here is one example of uh, one, uh, watershed here, this was done with SWOT. So, and then, so all of the models were uh, calibrated, validated, and then they were used in real-time application. So each time they would be ran automatically and the results would go to, to the clients, okay? So they could see where the flow was going and different things like that. So this is one example, and then here are old, some old slides, but so you could select each of the, like each reservoir or each subsystem and get what would be the stream flow for the next operat operative week or for the next month, and then assess what to do. So, in order, to, so here is a SWOT simulation with, uh, well, well, no, it's not here. Hmm. With the forecast here, but it's not, so sorry. But what we would do is would, uh, every day, it would change the previous precipitation with observed precipitation and then run with the we weather forecast for the future, okay? So then you would have, for the next 15 days, what would happen, so. This is one of uh, the applications and that we used SWOT there for, for Brazil, for many, many parts in Brazil. And also SWOT and neural networks, so yeah. And the weather forecast comes from WRF? WRF, yeah, the model that is used. It's the Climatempo model, oh. so they changed all the different parameters to make it uh, a little bit better for tropical regions and from Brazil. So it's calibrated for the Brazil and South America. But was there any comparison of that WR prediction against the NK? Uh, yes, yes, we had it. Uh, they've done, so Climatempo, for example, one of the companies, uh, aeronautic companies, compared all the different forecasts for weather forecasts for Brazil available. And the best one is for, from Climatempo, yeah. So there are some results, of course, some areas maybe, sure. yeah, but, uh, so yeah. And they are continuing to do, uh, there is a group in Climatempo that's only working with WRF model. Okay. So changing parameterizations, they changed a few things that have improved it, actually this last year. And also to do some post-processing based on uh, observed data. So that's what I was talking about in agriculture especially. Sure. So we are getting all the, the 
stage, uh, gauge stage measure data and trying to do post-processing for the predictions in the model. So that also gave us better results for weather forecasting. So I didn't put a lot about the weather forecasting, but yeah. So how many reservoirs total in the whole country? Uh, I don't know now. So roughly, you know, about 200? No, more. more Three, I think I would say 350, but I'm not sure. Not for this case, I don't have it here, no. For the forecasting, yeah. So of course, I didn't do this work. A lot of people have done this work for a, a long period of time, and uh, the, they are still working on improving it. So it's a continuous, uh, continuous process. Uh, the role of neural network where it was placed. Mm -hmm. The role of neural network where it was placed between the SWAT or no. Time? In this case, in some um, areas, for some uh, reservoirs, we use SWAT, and for uh, the others, neural networks. So most of it now is actually based in neural networks. So because it's easier to, especially if you don't have a lot of data, to have. Um, have it run quickly. So if a new reservoir is input in the grid system, you can have the data run and, and one week, two weeks, and ready to go. So for example, metrological data are input, and then the stream flow is output of Yeah, ex exactly, network. exactly, yeah. So. And yeah, so there is also a lot of data science going there uh, on and working on improving it. Okay. Any questions on the project or? Which ones give better results? Well, it depends. I assessed that for uh, some of the ones that we had SWAT, SWAT was doing better, uh, but for a few neural networks were, were doing better. I, I don't have a clear one. Of course, it depends. Uh, the All the calibration and validation, most of it was done uh, a few, uh, like, some time ago, so to make it improved, we would have to recalibrate actually some of these to make it better. So. Okay, any questions? Questions, questions? Okay, so I'm going to show now one of the projects that we are doing there, it's almost to the end. That is one of our R&D projects, research and development projects in Climatempo. So this project is called Hydro Metoceanographic Forecast for Waterways and Ports. So it's called PREVIA, it's an acronym in Portuguese. But um, it's a tool to support inland navigation and uh, planning and logistics. That was the goal here. So the, the here it's just in Portuguese, the title, you can find it. So um, the coordinator of this project, it is funded through FAPESP, through the PP program. Uh, just to show here that uh, FAPESP funds uh, innovated companies in Brazil. So this is uh, one, one project. This was the, the phase two project that they have there. So the goal was to improve planning and operations, okay, for inland navigation in Brazil. So I have, oops, sorry, here. So we are uh, working on a tool, a decision support tool that will have for forecasts, like meteorological forecasts, oceanographic forecasts, and also hydrological uh, forecast together, okay? So it w it's a web-based tool that you can, all the clients can access and then have the forecast for the region. So our first goal was the Amazon region. So um, 
we are targeting most of the waterways. Uh, let me show. This is the waterways in Brazil, all the different um, hidrovias, right, in Brazil. And we were targeting in this project the north ones there because especially of the production of grains in middle west then they have to go uh, to export it so it goes through the north hydro uh, waterways and uh, it is ex expected to grow a lot so we have uh, the government is investing in uh, improving the infrastructure to uh, have the grains from the Middle West uh, going through the North region to be exported to Europe and etc. Okay. So from this, um, this was the the project area. So we dealt with the Amazon basin in terms of our hydrological model. For meteorological model, we actually have all this area modeled. Okay. And then we have a hydrodynamic model that is more focus, focused only on the ports. So we have four ports in that region. So it was mostly focused on that. That are these ones here, so sorry. Uh, these are some of the point, ports. So in Belém, in Macapá, and there are two here, in Porto Vila do Conde, two here. So I think this is too small. I don't think, can you see it? No, right, let me get out of this mode. Let me just make it a little bit bigger, sorry. So the project consisted on a meteorological uh, step that was we done with um, the WRF model here for meteorological input. And also for climate, we did the CFS model. But then we are using some down, like uh, correction biases here especially. And also we had some challenges here to try to improve the meteorological forecast. So both of these model outputs uh, will come to the, I can't do that, can I? Okay, wait just a moment. So these models are the outputs will be combined and then there is also an ensemble of models so different forecasts were used so different model outputs for different physical conditions in the meteorological models. So this uh, was then ran on SWOT, a calibrated and validated model that's the pro purpose and then the output here of um, so SWOT would get is will give stream flow. Then we did some uh, some uh, equations to convert the stream flow into the water height, okay, from SWOT, and then the stream flow would go to the hydrodynamic model that we used here. That's Delf three D. And then the hydrodynamic model also would receive the 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 other wave model, inshore model. Okay, so that was the goal. So we started modeling the well, the change there, the Amazon region. And what we saw with SWOT is that was that it was too wrong. 
So the precipitation was awful. We could not have good precipitation in the region. And so we went a step back and um, tried to gather more precipitation data for, for Brazil and try to do that uh, systematically, systematically and combine this. So we got a lot of different um, gauge station data for precipitation and then also radar data where it was available and then satellite data as well. And then, so this is all of the, all of the precipitation stations in Brazil by region, for example, here. But so there are like uh, 14,000 in the databases of the governments. But then if you go to what is available, for example, for, from 1990 to 2017, then you have like half of the stations, okay, precipitation data. And as you can see, uh, we have a good coverage in Sao Paulo region and a very sparse one in the Amazonian region, okay. And this is related to the number of ob observations. So there was a lot of missing data too. So in blue, you have what is better in terms of um, availability of data in this time period. And then in red, you see also the Northeast has a lot of missing data and the Amazon region, the North has a lot of missing data too. So we used the methodology that was developed in INPI that combines different sources of satellite, radar, and uh, gauge station data. Uh, and we changed a little bit with all the our gauge station data collected to do a merge of precipitation. So we did that for, for Brazil. And uh, this is uh, only the, the stations uh, with um, in like a interpolation first and then this is uh, the ground truth. It has uh, like a, a higher uh, confidence. So you use this as higher confidence and then you extrapolate using like, for example, uh, satellite data, okay. So with this, we intended to get the rainfall a little bit better to run SWOT, for example, okay. So, of course, it's a huge basin, uh, and we had a lot of problems only uh, to delineate all the, the stream flows, and especially with the DEM or in the uh, more downstream region where it's very flat to make sure the water is flowing the right way or the way that we want it, especially in the waterways. So we changed a little bit even the DEM to make sure the water was going through the waterways, the hydrovias, okay. So this was, I think, the, what we delineated uh, in terms of the SWAT project. Then we collected all the, uh, we done uh, soils map combining different, uh, because we have different countries too. So we got the Brazilian soil map, soils map and then combined it with a South American one and then some, some changes in this. And um, also we got all of these are soil parameters. So we had a lot of data from Embrapa, which I showed you yesterday, the, uh, the database from Embrapa. So they had more than 3,000 um, samples of soils from all these different regions. And we, we uh, analyzed a few of them in terms of the most um, important hydrological uh, soil properties for us. And then saw what was the variability in the watershed and then defined a few of the areas that the soils were similar to define then the properties to go in SWAT, okay. But this was, we only had this data for Brazilian side. Um, then we had the land use maps from Mapiomas and uh, also w, uh, WWF, WWF has a land use map for the, uh, the 
Amazon region upstream. So we use that too. And then we still, we calibrated. We are still not uh, all set with the results that we got, but then we calibrated it and still are calibrating for a few of the uh, watersheds, sub-basins that we have there. So these are some of the results um, for some of the outlets uh, that we had in the Amazonian region. Ah, sorry. Ah, okay. So this is uh, in. Okay. So let me go back here also. So we have in red is the estimation, the best estimation from SWOT, and then in blue is the observed data. Okay. This is not well. I didn't put here. This is uh, ah. This is what you would get exactly out of SWOT cup. So. I just took the prints out of <laughs> there, so it's not all the the data, uh, the years here. How long what? From for one iteration. Uh, ah no no, it's not too bad. Uh, we c well we ran it. Uh, I think you can run. Like one day we could run maybe a hundred iterations or something like that. How, how many simulations? A hundred? A yeah, a hundred times we ran the model and got the result in one day. But it, of course it depends on the computer power. Yeah. But, uh, oh, so. Yeah. So let me see. I don't. I I didn't put a map here with which outlets from where. So I'm not sure which one is the bigger. This is upstream. This is upstream, and then maybe this is downstream. 115. Yeah, no, 150,000, right? Yeah, 150,000. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think it's. Yeah, I don't have the locations here. Uh, the map. No, this is not Obidos, I don't think. Uh, so, this is 40,000, and then this is 100,000. I think the most downstream one is this one here. It's around 100,000. Yeah, 150,000. So. Yeah, I didn't put all the gauge stations here, just a few to yeah, highlight. Uh, we had 20 gauges that we selected for the period. A little bit less, yeah. But we are still, we, we aren't done, so there are a few of them that are not good still, <laughs> that we have to go through and uh, calibrate it better. These are more upstream um, gauges. Okay. So just to show, it still needs work. It's a work in progress still. Um, so also we wanted uh, stream flow, but we also wanted to check um, the water heights of the rivers. So we tried a different uh, equations to convert um, here uh, the stream flow into uh, water height, okay, for different points in the waterways that was of interest. And uh, we did that through using satellite data through, to, so this is Dahiti satellite data. So we established some curves from uh, stream flow and water heights, okay? We did those based on the area and optimized it a little bit to try to reach something that we thought was reasonable. Um, and also checked with all these points are all points of the satellite data that we had. This, this is the most important uh, waterway. So this was our main focus. And this is one uh, forecast example for different uh, members of the water uh, forecasting model. 
So we included that we had the weather forecasting model with four different members and we included, included that output in the SWOT model and then the stream flow we converted into water heights. And then this is the water height already there and here. Uh, this is water height in meters and then with the different weather predictions, okay, weather forecast, sorry, weather forecasts for the, for like comparing with one, here is one station of the, as if it was a station from the satellite. Okay. Any questions? Oh, okay. So, highlight how oh, much course. time you spend in terms of starting the project and providing the first results. How many people work not only in simulating but collecting the data and also negotiating some data mining and so on and even presenting and refining because you present the first draft and after a meeting you need to uh, rerun the, the model and so uh, can you of make course. an assessment of this process yeah Time, yeah yeah money and people sure and so this is a project it was funded through FAPESPI. we got maybe 800 eight, 850 uh, thousand yes okay yeah it's a pp but uh, almost the 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 ceiling was a million so i got a we got a little less than a million so with that we got um in terms of we got a um, cluster of computers okay and other than that it was um just uh, scholarships for the the people that were working in the project so we had two years two years project we are about to reach the two years now so it will be two years and uh, yeah it yeah it is it just yeah now it was two years it started so so we had five people working in this project so one is more focused in um, the meteorological side so one one person is responsible to getting the weather and climatic <coughs> forecasts better so they she's working camila is working with the the weather and for and climate forecast and together of course with Cl uh, climatempo staff so with rodrigo and the other ones that work with already the weather forecasting there okay and then we had one person dealing with the SWOT hydrological uh, model. So first, actually, it was Maria here from Prof uh, Professor Maria, now from uh, the, the department here. She was there working prior, Maria Mercedes, yeah, before she came here for a short time period. And then that's the thing. Then we, there was a few months that we didn't have anybody. <laughs> but then we got uh, somebody else to, to take over. That is Luis. He, he worked mostly in all the modeling with SWOT there. And then uh, we have Alini, which is, I'll show now, the, that's working a lot with the hydrodynamic model. So more, she's an uh, oceanograph, oceano, I can say that. I see. I don't even know how to say it in Portuguese. <laughs> so we had three very good specialists working, and then we had two. Um, uh, how do you say? Uh, data? No, just uh, TI. Uh, yeah, TI. TI. Yeah. Scholar. IT. No, sorry. In English is IT, right? Uh, so Igor worked a lot. He uh, worked a lot, for example, in getting all this data, doing the crawler to get all this data for the, from the different agencies, and then to connect that to our database. And then we also had a team that was already working in Climatempo with the database. 
So that helped a lot. And then we did all this merge with him too. So it's a two year project and we just finished, but we are still need uh, a few more months to actually finish everything. What's paid, what's paid by <coughs> FAPESP? Almost uh, nine, 900,000. Um, yeah, the, the ceiling was a, ta um, a million. Yes, but all the project was paid by, by FAPESP. FAPESP, the scholarship, and so on. Yes, everything. Okay. And are you, are you going to present an official uh, meeting, uh, open these figures with the reports? What are you thinking? Because it's PIPE is related to uh, technology transfer also, and also the possibility to promote uh, technological companies, startups, and so on. So yeah. it's, a, it's a kind of spin off of a sector in Climatempo, I understand. Uh -huh. But anyway, it is a very good findings because you are mixing private public funding. Yeah. And also, this kind of results are of uh, public utility. In, in of course, yeah, I think so too. But yeah, we had an, we have this PP and we have another PP too. So we had two PP. One, this is a, a second phase, so it's up to a million, and the other one is a third phase, up to 1.5 million. So that's uh, what I was majorly working on when I was in Climatempo. So these two projects, and uh, now we are we are about to finish both. We will finish both this year and have the products ready. So this this is actually going is almost uh, ready. It's a web-based product uh, that will be available and will be commercialized. Right. Okay. So also, we have the the other PP that we've done uh, created a smartphone app that you can download. So anyone can download one of the uh, products is free for uh, any citizen that can download. It's called Pedagua. I'm announcing it. Pedagua. Pedagua, yes. Mm. It's um, still in the final testing. Uh, so I have it here, but it's not available for everyone. So it's still in final testing mode, but we will release it uh, this year before December to, tr to try it during the rainy season. So in okay. for the re metropolitan region of Sao Paulo. The, the goal is different. I'm not showing here because it, we didn't use a lot of SWOT in it. But it's to forecast um, flooding and uh, impoundments, yeah. So yes, uh, um, they are both going to be, they will be products. The idea of the company is to uh, develop it based on high level research and then to convert that in something profitable for the of course, future. Of course. And we only were able to do that through the uh, FAPESP financing. So it, it is the way we could have good people, very good people working and developing all of this in the company for... You have this special atmosphere promoting this innovation with... Uh, exactly, with so we had, we were only in an innovation hub that was only for research and development and innovation. So we had different projects that were uh, done in yeah. this respect. Yeah. We had I, private I, I, projects That too, is very important this. also for this course because one of the uh, associated center of this school is the Center of Applied Mathematics for Industry. Mm -hmm. That is hosted here in the Institute of Mathematics. And also one special uh, goal is to promote using the knowledge as a transfer knowledge to, to, for startups for or spin-off. And now they have also the Euler supercomputer. Uh, uh, so people are hosting all these algorithms, mm. models, and of course SWOT model could be, uh, I said, parallelized over there or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's a very good example of how, how you uh, migrate from the scientific knowledge, going to very practical private atmosphere, mm -hmm. but also maintaining the partnership uh, this is also for some people here are interested in, in PIP and, and yeah. PSP and so on. So this is yeah, a, I think uh, so. It's a great opportunity yes. to, to be able to have this financing and then to try something very different and innovative, I guess, and have it for the... That, that means that SWOT could be in the, in the middle of the frame yeah. to, 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 to attain new 
I'm not. I'm not in the process. I would like to start the process, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But you know, at the same time, when I see this huge amount of work, uh, then I am sure it's not easy. It needs more people. <laughs> no, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it it needs more people. You were six people uh, together working, collaboration, collaborating. So then, people project makes sense, and I mean, yeah, of course, for a long term approach or just perspective it's so cool and i think it's something achievable but you have the people yeah exactly <laughs> that that's she, she contacted the people to give scholarship from her but here the people has scholarships yeah just you need to convince them that you are you have a very good idea yeah the commercializing also is very important uh because based on theory on the paper everything can be beautiful but you don't know what will happen in practice so i mean it needs really much more brainstorming much more pre-planning and then when we are sure yeah we go for that but yeah you're right i'm happy at least we have people here <laughs> <laughs> the first requirement yeah yeah so that's better <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, uh, of course, this didn't come from anything. I already did, a, I prop we proposed this based, I had a, done my, my PhD here with them too. I already knew SWOT. I was going to a company that was already Climatempo that had expertise in more the meteorological field, so couldn't support me with this. And then, uh, of course, there was a lot of people involved in this process, helping and working, and it was a lot of work, and it still is. Uh, so, uh, and it's not completely done, and I'm not sure any day it will be. I think it's something that you have to keep on going and keep on innovating to have it very good results for the people because if I do this and I predict the waterway and I'm like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here then like it's the companies that sell soy that will complain so it's not just an application that I'll say okay my 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 uh, so I'm, I missed a little bit no they'll be calling and say you missed my boat is I can't you know so it's a lot of pressure, but it's rewarding too, I think. So it's nice to have uh, research done in a way that is applied. That's what we, I can, uh, that's the major point I think that we can do and it's growing in Brazil too. So yeah. Well, I was going to show the hydrodynamic model, but I don't think I need to go too much into that. Um, so the, the idea is that we took the, outputs from the Amazonian SWOT model and also the different inputs for the Ocean model and then we ran it focused in this region here uh, only for the Delft 3D model, the uh, hydrodynamic model, okay. So we, we use different um, domains, so different uh, grades, I don't know how to say it, uh, grades, uh, for these regions in the hydrodynamic model. And uh, thus we used also, we have here in Brazil the cartas nauticas, the nautic uh, cards, I don't know how to say it, with bathymetric data, okay. And then we converted all that and also with uh, satellite data and uh, put that in the same uh, geoid, same geoid, yeah, of reference, the same reference, okay. And then, so this is the, like the, one of the bathymetric uh, schemes that we have for the region. This is all the floodplain too in the Amazon region here. And then, yeah, we, this is the meaning coefficient, for example, we changed and analyzed what would be the change in the meaning coefficient and based on some studies that were done in the region. So we got that data and try to see how, how to change it. And so this is the frontiers of the 
hydrodynamic model. So all the red dots here would get an input from SWOT, and all this uh, blue line here would get an input for the Haikun model, which is another model that was predicting the inflow from the ocean. So this is some data points that we had in the region. So some points that we had some kind of data. So not a lot of data. S maybe we had like um, only tide in f a few of them and only uh, stream flow in a few of them. So it was not good data all, all along. But and uh, so I think, let me. Uh, there was an animation, but I don't think it's animating. No, maybe. S yeah, so this is one run for uh, one day, and it had the, the water. Ah, there it is, I think. Okay. So this is just an animation from the, the model. What? Pororoca. Yeah, I don't know. It's not a Pororoca, right? <laughs> but in case people surf in the direction of this uh, Pororoca, <laughs> this, this, uh, this is big station. Huh? So since we didn't have a lot of observed data, we also um, <coughs> checked with um, this is tide component M2 and the difference of the amplitude if it was um, simulating well. And this is the water level uh, for Belém, close to the um, port there in Belém do Pará, the, the model and the simulated. And uh, so we extracted uh, as like virtual stations data from the satellites, so in Visach, and for these points here in the region, some from Graz and Daichi in green. And uh, to also see what, what was the expected uh, area and uh, surface area and the flooded, yeah. And so we have a lot of comparison also between, this is bathymetric comparison, the run, runs and what is observed, for example, there. And, uh, and here is like all the flood plain and, uh, and then the, the, this this round circles here are the observed values from the satellite, observed, well, well, estimated values from the satellites and then the predictive ones by the water level predicted on the Delft 3D model. Okay. So this is for one run. We did several runs and tested different scenarios to see what it would be better. Okay. So based on this is the uh, yeah from this different uh, satellite data. Okay. And then this is like a flooding map that was done and for one day also for the region based on the the model. So so the thing is we did all these different models separately and there was peop different people working in each one of them calibrating them, validating them and then the thing was to make sure we could have all this data running in real-time situations, predicting every day what would happen for the next uh, few days and months. So all of this is operational now. So it's all done with a lot of support of, of course, the Climatempo team that works with more operations in the company already. So there is still a few, uh, few things that have to be included, but most of the models are already running in operation and they are uh, one out, uh, like for example, the meteorological output will go automatically in the SWOT input and therefore, and all of this is going, this is just a, a first um, 
a first uh, scheme that we done two years ago. So this is not how it looks, but this is the like the web view that will be. You can click in different points and then extract the data or look at the data and see what kind of results you have for each point there. And uh, we have a uh, like a little paper for in a Brazilian uh, Brazilian uh, journal that we published uh, just a year ago. So it, it was the beginning of this process. We still didn't have a lot of uh, calibrated data, but we already had uh, most of the setups of the models. And this is, uh, it was from one uh, international port um, Congress, and then this is the, the journal. But as we are about to finish this year, we'll finish this project, and we are very happy already with the results and trying to make sure we will get even better results and, and have this available. But yeah, so I'll, it's just one application, of course, of how it could be or what could is done and uh, in private companies, but using SWOT or using research and in applied way to create, create uh, value and richness around the world, I guess, and especially here in Brazil. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> it's my turn. So you the whole thing. Yeah. What is the evaluation now? <laughs> oh. This was very impressive. And I think we all uh, are excited to try out SWAT Plus. And this week was really good. Uh, for me, it was really good. I learned a lot. And let's go for it. <laughs> nice. I think this is a similar condition that we need to, to work more close to, to Texas AM, AgriLife people. So for that reason, we need to go ahead and make a new step to, for a new project. Right? Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Danny, you, you are invited. So here we have several uh, young people. Uh, do you have any comments? Okay. About water quality, Danny, mm -hmm. are you thinking that perhaps in the future to uh, add some water quality in this assessment? Yes, of course. I haven't, well, I haven't personally worked a lot with water quality, but it's something that I'm definitely interested in in the coming years. So. Uh, and, in and, the in the and in the terms of uh, transboundary conditions, uh, big catchments, mm -hmm. big partners, big countries, that means conflicts. Uh, yes. And do you have any comments about the reception this kind of assessment has, not only in Brazil, but also in the headwaters uh, countries. Uh, countries? Uh, like uh, in the Peru, Amazon? The Amazon. You are, basing, you mean, okay. are you some, do you have some contacts of course, Colombia? We have partners, um, but you have more, more, more countries. Huh? We did, Bolivia. and we, we tried to, to so, <laughs> yeah, it's hard and it's uh, complicated, I think, to have all the partnerships and it's something you don't create in a uh, very short time period. And we had a lot of difficulties to get obtained data from a few of the countries, upper stream, uh, um, the Amazon basin and, uh, and South America. So if most of them did not have a database that is available openly for anyone to go down there and just select and download. So we had some troubles. We had to write uh, letters and try to contact authority people in these countries to try to get data. 
uh, a few of them we were able to collect and a few we were not. But uh, I, I suppose several Brazilian institutions has the database of other countries, not only researchers, but uh, some operational mm -hmm. uh, uh, centers like uh, national centers. Yes, yes, those we have, those we got. When we got all the South American data from, for, uh, from our agencies in Brazil, Okay. Uh, but also they, have, also they have also they have some agreements with uh, with them. Yeah. With them. So sometimes we can you can ask for the Brazilian partners uh, who has who have the partners yeah, ships with like with. Yeah, of course. Uh, but we had a strict timeline, no, no, it and it was hard to obtain data for everywhere. So we did what we thought it was possible. Yeah. Tired. Yeah. Right. To, the, uh, to the end, end yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. This, yeah, we finished. Uh, yeah. Okay. But maybe if they have any questions, but I think they had a can lot we, to. <laughs> can we project um, uh, show the first slide of the course? Yeah, I was going the, to the two, find. Yeah, two let me. Of three let and, and because we need to make an. Uh, Wrap up. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me let me get that no. per minutes. So at this moment we are uh, just at the end. Uh, of course, five days concentrated in two or three minutes is very hard, but it's very important to have some feedback from you it, no. because it's not my monologue. Uh, so I invite some of you to make some statement about your feedback, and also Gabriela is going to share with you a survey. Uh, about how do you uh, make the evaluation of the course? We can use the same, the same sheet we we use last last year. We can a, 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 a kind of of survey to to share with you. So, uh, but anyway, we need some one or two comments coming from the field. And the field is the field means the the academy, the people, the plenary. So. I would like, to, okay, please. Your name again. So, I'm um, Gabriel. Um, I'm doing a master's in university, uh, Federal University of Santa Catarina State. And I would like to like, congratulate everybody who was involved in, in doing this course. It was very good. I believe everybody here thinks uh, got a lot to learn. And the organization was done perfectly. Like we, we had time to learn. We had time to ask questions. Um, I sincerely don't know how to improve. I don't have any uh, tips to improve because it was really good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to say some words. Um, I'm representing the students from UFCG. And they, they said thank you for you, professor, and for the attention and patience. And they learned a lot. And they are open for partnerships with us. And they say thank you so much. Good. Good. Comments? Suggestions? Comments? Criticisms? We are, we are very welcome. Your criticisms, your ideas, comments. To how can we refresh or, or update for a new version? Ali. Yeah, first of all, I think I was very lucky to contact you and just this course happened between our emailing. So it was so great for me, something new, something with lots of potential, especially in practice. You, you, you can touch the results in the field, I think. You can, you can feel them. It's not based on theory all. And it has a lot to do, even for me as a member of Soil Physics Society or some as very young member. I think I'm going to change now a little bit more towards practic mm -hmm. practical uh, things. Uh, and I'm also so happy to be in the course. The whole course was great. Of course, uh, it was very compact and very zipped version of the course. So 
I sh shouldn't have expected so much, I mean, to learn everything. But for a starting point for me, nothing can be better than this, I think. Uh, and no, actually, no, I have no other comments. That was just perfect enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. One more statement. OK. Oh, two, three, four. We have a line here. First. Well, I'm very nervous about. <laughs> uh, no, um, my name is Mihla. I'm from CPAM, the Ge Geological Service of Brazil. And I'm studying in Brazilian University. I do my doctor. And this course is very good for me. I'm very happy to stay here. And uh, I just to uh, thank you for everything. Falar em português. É, não, eu queria agradecer muito também ao, ao curso, é, a oportunidade da gente ter vindo lá da saúde pública e, é, e entrar assim, no mundo da engenharia. Mas é, foi muito importante, assim, eu comecei a mexer com o SWOT no mestrado e eu fiquei um ano para tentar entender o pouquinho assim, que a gente conseguiu usar. É, então, eu estou muito empolgada, tem muita coisa já que dá para a gente fazer e resolver. E também a questão da parceria, assim, eu estou super disposta a fazer parcerias e acho que juntar forças, né? A gente tem muita gente boa fazendo muitas coisas, a gente precisa se juntar mais, porque acho que a gente fica um pouco isolado. E fazer essa troca, essa expertise, assim, acho que enriquece o trabalho. Né? Uhum. A gente não vai dar conta de aprender todas as áreas numa encarnação só, mas não. se você juntar é, o conhecimento né, de todo mundo, acho que a gente tem muito potencial. Ah, com certeza. Obrigada, Legal. obrigada. Yeah. Hello. Uh, my English is not so good, but I will try it anyway. Ah, my language. Uh, um, I was I was searching for a, a model that I would uh, could try working on, um, but and I really like the SWAT, and I think I can. I um, uh, can get a, a really good results, results from it, and I'm really excited to try it and study it. And I really like uh, like to thank you a lot for the patient with my computer <laughs> that it didn't work. It <laughs> so I think it's time to change it, change my computer. <laughs> and we no, it doesn't. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think I really like to to thank you a lot for the, for it, and Danny too, and also Thanks. Danny for for uh, the advices that we we talk uh, to uh, yesterday mm -hmm. about some things and. I I want to thank you, uh, Mario, for the opportunity to be here, mm -hmm. and that's it. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Well, let me say another thank you from UFP. Pernambuco. <laughs> As our friend from Pernambuco, they say thank you for the course and disponibility. <laughs> And it was really good, and they are all excited to try out this Watt Plus and the <laughs> new measurements. So nice. that's it. They say thank you. Good. Yes. Oh, thank you, UFCG and UFP, for staying with us this week. Yeah. Thank you so much for Samara and Ulysses. Yeah, they are calling us there. And also, in, with this applause, we, we applaud also people from Hudson, Marcelo, and Junior also that stay here. Yes.
maintaining the hydrograph of, of, of the power energy <laughs> of our streaming. Very, very stationary. Yeah. Yeah. Stationarity condition. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Well, we're, we're approaching to the end. Uh, do you have some words uh, for your side, uh, Gabriela? From your side, do you have some comments? Last comment? No. As I'm, I see you. <laughs> so, first of all, I'd like to thank you, all of you that are here and you are uh, like the soul of the course, and Professor Dani and Frini for being here and so patient and cute, and you all help us a lot. So, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Well, uh, my last words are not words, are some uh, gifts. So I have uh, <laughs> two small gifts here in order to put a flavor of Brazilian biomes. So we have some small gifts here to, to Professor, the good teachers, I, I, I mentioned that. <laughs> the good teacher, Professor Daniele Bresciani, please come here. This is only some small gifts for, with a Brazilian taste. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. The, the, this university is yours, eh? you know that. Thank so you thank you for much. sharing well, your like time. <laughs> thank you for your for your university. Ah, nice. Ah, please show it. Uh, this is this is this is the 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 coffee, coffee. blended here. This mm. is in the neighborhood in Dorados. Si, it's 100 percent coffee too. 100 percent Arabica. Uh, this is, but it's in the is the region. This region here. Yeah. And also you have some. As the Germans say, Susik Susi Kaiten. Nice. Yeah, let me, let me. We have from special more. biome. Ah, okay. okay. Geleia jabuticaba. Jabuticaba. Okay, this is one special biome run I by. Love jabuticaba. Uh, uh, so thank you for thank coming. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Srini, this is for you with a bit a bit of taste of Amazon River beer. So, Mm. Yeah, thank you for coming, uh, Srini. Uh, uh, it's always uh, a pleasure receiving you here, and also Texas A&M University authorizing you to come here. And the uh, jelly is from Kupuasu. This is uh, ah, Amazon. Okay. The only problem is I want you to take it with me because yeah. in the plane I can't take anything. You, you can validate the taste. Yeah. Not validate the model, yeah. the taste. <laughs> the taste. You can validate it's coming from. Okay, mm -hmm. and I would like to thank you all, all the good teachers here. This was a pleasure. And also the possibility of other institutions, the, the, the Center of Applied Mathematics for Industry, the CMI, and also the Center of Education and Research of Natural of, of Disaster, the CEPET. INCLINE is the interdisciplinary center of climate change. Also the National Institute of Science and Technology of Climate Change also here. And of course, the people of Pantaray uh, from the International Association of Hydrological Science. We are supporting this decade and this special biennium of uh, water and society under chain. So, to everybody, thank you for coming. And the next uh, uh, module of the school will be uh, announced uh, uh, very soon. Also, coming people from the University of Saskatchewan. Arizona State University and uh, University of Illinois, yeah, Urbana, Champaign. So thank you for coming to all of you and have a nice uh, week and a nice and not so hot weekend. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you, Gabi, for organizing it too. So thank you. And thanks for having us, Manu.